Okay, we looked at the shape and the spread, uh, the shape and the center for one quantitative variables. Now we're going to look at measures of spread. So we have a pizza delivery person recorded all of her tips over several shifts. She discusses the results and much more on Diary of a Pizza Girl on the SLICE website. The variable tip in the data set includes 24 tips she recorded and these values are given to us. So we want to use technology to find the mean and the standard deviation for these values. So we pull out our calculator. We're going to go to stat and then stay on edit because we're entering numbers. Anytime you're entering a data set, you want to be on edit. Now, I already have numbers in there, so I'm going to use the up arrow, clear, down arrow, erases what's in the list. And now I'm going to enter the numbers for this data set, hitting enter after each one. And yes, we do enter the zeros. So there are 24 data values. Now we want to do a calculation, so we're going to go back to stat. But now we're going to go over to calculate. And we want to calculate one variable statistics. We only put in one set of data, so we want the statistics for that set of data. So we hit enter. It's in L1, frequency list doesn't matter, calculate. So now we see that the mean is 3.04. Yeah, it says two decimal places, so the mean 3.04, it asks for the standard deviation, standard deviation is SX, and SX is 1.75, or we could say just S. Now it asks for the five number summary. Well, if we scroll down, we get the five number summary. Remember, it's the minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. So our five number summary is 0, 2, 3, 3.5, and 8. Now we want the range. The range is the max minus the min, which would be 8 minus 0 or 8. IQR, or interquartile range. is Q3 minus Q1, Q3 is 3.5, Q1 is 2, so that's an interquartile range of 1.5. Now, if one customer had given a $20 tip, on which measure of spread would the tip have the greater effect, the range or the IQR? Well, it would have the greater effect on the range because it just uses the min and the max. The IQR uses Q1 and Q3 and those don't change if we add a large value in there. Okay, now we have a histogram showing data for the variable height of 355 students. We used this one previously. 
we want to estimate the mean and the standard deviation from the histogram. Since it's fairly symmetric and bell-shaped, the mean is near the middle. And the middle is right here around 68. So it's about 68. Since it's symmetric and bell-shaped, we can use the 95% rule that says there would be about 9 in each tail. We get that because 355 times 0 0.05 17.75, which is approximately 18. So 9 in each tail. So we look at the left side, and 9 appears to be those. And on the right side, this appears to be about nine values. So we have about 76 minus 61 over 4. And remember, we use 4 because it's plus or minus two standard deviations. So that's 15 over 4. or 3.75, or we could use approximately 4. Now we want to estimate the value of the maximum height for a person in the sample. And using the estimated values of mean and standard deviation, find and interpret a z-score for this person's height. Well, it appears that the max that would be this student right here, is about 83. So the z-score, you know, we'll round this up to 4. We usually don't, but because it's an approximation, we can round it. So the z-score would be 83 minus 68 divided by 4, which is 15 over 4, which is 3.75. And interpreting this, it would be that the student of maximum height is about 3.75 standard deviations above the mean.